Hello, good day. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about this inverted pendulum that I built. I spent around three years making this pendulum. And the reason for that is because it took me a long time to convince myself that I was modeling it correctly. Uh, but we'll get into that later. Um, so what is this and why do you want to make one? So this is uh, an inverted pendulum is a platform that is typically used in academia and in universities as a way to to sort of demonstrate and test uh, control system uh, algorithms and control system techniques. Uh, so the idea is that you, you've got this, this pendulum uh, that you can sort of swing freely and this thing is connected to a cart that can move left and right. And if you do it correctly, you can effectively uh, you know, use the cart to impart a motion into the pendulum and swing it upright and uh, sort of catch it while it's upright and uh, using the motion of the cart, you can keep it you can keep it in, in that position. So it's quite an interesting controlled problem because it's not an easy thing for even a human being to do. Uh, so it's, uh, you can see, you'll see that it's, it's much better, it's a very well suited um, for, to an uh, electronic control system. So if you are interested in making one of these or just making things in general, uh, I'd recommend you continue watching these videos. I'll be talking about everything that I've done to design, build, uh, model it in MATLAB and Simulink, uh, design the controllers and show and check that it works. So if you, that interests you, please continue watching. Welcome back. So I'm going to be breaking up this video into four parts. Uh, in the first part in this video, I'm going to be talking about the hardware uh, that I've used, the hardware components uh, that comprise the system. Uh, I'll get into a little bit about the overall design and we'll go into CAD and we'll actually look at uh, the physical assembly of the components. Uh, in part two, I'll basically be talking about the electronic components that I use. We'll talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of them. Uh, we'll get into some wiring diagrams and how I've actually wired them up. Uh, we'll then actually look a little bit at the software structure um, that I've implemented on the Arduino. And at that point, we'll be able to drive the system with a step response. And what I mean by that is we'll basically just drive the motor at a fixed uh, speed and we'll uh, record the distance that it, the car traveled and how fast it did. And we'll also look at the response of the pendulum and, and how it moved. And we'll record that data and we'll put it into Excel. And we we'll just have a look at it to make sure that it, it is what we expect it to be. In part three, I'll basically construct the Simulink model and we'll get into a little bit of the equations uh, that I've used and how I have constructed the overall Simulink model. Um, we'll then take the data that we used, uh, that we got from the um, Excel's, uh, Excel um, step response, that is in Excel, and we'll actually use the MATLAB's parameter estimation tool to match it up. So we'll then get a perfect, near perfect model of the pendulum, uh, pendulum response at that point. Uh, then in part four, I'll basically be de designing two controllers. And the first one is the um, swing up controller, which basically just sort of drives the cart such that the, the energy in the pendulum keeps increasing until, until the pendulum is upright in the upright position. And then at that point, the LQR controller will take over and I'll show you how I've designed the LQR controller. And that just makes sure that it stays, it does stay upright, um, uh, in that condition. And we'll talk about why I've used a LQR versus a PID controller when we, when we get there. So. So I appreciate that there are a lot of different types of pendulums out there. This one is uh, just a single uh, linear inverted pendulum. There are double and triple inverted pendulums and uh, rotary pendulums, but this one is just a straight uh, single linear inverted pendulum. So with this pendulum in particular, there's basically two, two interesting aspects to it that makes it a little bit different um, compared to a standard inverted pendulum. The first one is that the track length is is pretty short. 
The reason for that is because I, I intended to actually carry this around to different like events and universities to show people uh, how, uh, in this, how these control algorithms can work and that sort of thing and just to demonstrate control systems to, to people who are not familiar with it. Um, the problem with that is that now your control actually needs to be a lot tighter because, because with a longer track length, you can actually, you can actually, um, you'll be able to move uh, and a lot more and, and basically you'll be able to compensate for if your pendulum is, for example, all the way out here, you, you can basically move the pendulum all the way out there and try to counter it. Uh, whereas in this one, your control, your control mechanism, your control algorithms need to be a lot tighter. Um, so the other thing is that basically if we turn this around, uh, you can see, you can see the, um, the, how the drive mechanism actually works. So, so I actually didn't believe this worked when I, when I was building it. Um, but basically it's, it's different because the drive mechanism is actually mounted onto the cart itself. So it's, it's, uh, you basically drive the motor and the motor, um, sort of imparts a, a force onto the, uh, a torque onto the, this intermediate gear. And this intermediate gear is also mounted to the cart itself. And as you drive it, it sort of creates a reaction force with the rack and because the rack can't move anywhere, um, it basically, that reaction force gets translated into the cart itself. So it's quite an interesting design. Um, the main implications of this is that the, the, your, your cart now sort of has, or the, the motion of the cart now has sort of like a non-negligible, uh, uh, inertia to it and, and frictional, um, load, load. So, so the, 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 um, load on the motor is actually not negligible. You could have sort of neglected that with with your standard um, inverted pendulums, which is just sort of belt driven and there's nothing else on the cart except the pendulum. But in this case, we do have a non-negligible load on the motor, so we have to compensate for that. So we'll now get into the CAD model, uh, which I think will uh, will allow me to show a bit more of, the, of how this is actually assembled. Uh, so we'll get into that now. Right, so here we are in Autodesk Fusion, where I have a complete CAD model of the entire pendulum system. And I've done this basically because I have four of these components are 3D printed. The first one is the stand. Uh, that's the two block-like components on either side of the pendulum. And it basically allows it, the, it, it mounts the linear slide and the rack uh, here uh, and sort of allows it to be suspended uh, above uh, the floor level um, so that basically the cart can move left and right freely. And it does this because it's, I've basically created some matching holes that just allow the rack and the linear slide to just kind of slot in there. Uh, there's nothing too impressive with this component. It's just, uh, it was easy for me to do it like this. And the only thing you need to bear in mind is that you want it short enough so that the pendulum doesn't, doesn't, doesn't hit it when it's swinging up. Uh, the next thing is the control block. So this is the more interesting component because uh, that's this component here. And it's interesting because everything kind of connects back to this in some way or another. So the first thing it connects to is the linear slide. So if I hide the motor and the motor clamp, and we'll hide the control block for now, uh, this is the linear slide and it'll usually c come with this um, sort of cart. And this this provides like a low uh, friction contact surface with the, with the track or with the, the slide itself. And you want to make sure and get it with this with this cut. Um, it's got some ball bearings basically inside of here that that provide that low friction contact surface. Uh, but you want to buy this with the linear slide because you don't want to try and buy this separately and then try to have to match it up with the, with the slide that you got. Uh, the important thing is that it's got these mounting holes on it, and that is basically how the control block connects to it. So I've basically created some some wide holes that will allow the screw. So it's it's basically screwed down. Through those through those mounting holes in the in the linear slide, and you want to make this pretty wide so that the screw goes all the way down, so that it, it the screw head doesn't sort of protrude out past the surface. Because remember, I I have mounted the motor clamp on top of here, so I didn't want anything that would prevent me from doing that. Uh, so it's just basically got these four holes, and that is how it's connected to the to the uh, cart. The next thing that sort of connects to this is, so remember the, the pendulum needs to be able to rotate about, about some axis and it rotates uh, using this, this, this rod that basically runs the length through, it runs through the entire control block. 
and it's supported by these uh, pillow pillow bearings. Uh, the, this rod is actually steel. It, it 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 doesn't need to be steel. I just made it steel in because initially my pendulum was actually steel as well, and then I didn't think that it was such a great idea to swing a 500 millimeter steel rod uh, in my house. So uh, this is now actually carbon fiber, but I just left this as a steel rod. So anyway, it's 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 supported through these pillow bearings. Uh, one is on the inside of the control block and the other one's on the outside. So what I've done here is I've basically um, made the mounting hole for this con for this pillow bearing uh, completely through this side of the control block so that I can actually screw this, I can screw this down. Um, if, the, if the screwdriver is sort of thin enough, it'll just go straight through there and I can screw this one down and then screw the other side down um, and then basically screw down this, this pillow bearing and then push the shaft straight straight through. On this side of the control block, we've got the encoder. Now this template is sort of a little different than, than, what, than the encoder I have there now, but the encoder that I have is mounted on this side of the control block. Uh, so the next thing, the pendulum, uh, to connect the pendulum, and the next thing, the next component that is 3D printed is this, is this component here. Now I've called this, I call this the sort of pendulum coupler, and it, it basically couples the pendulum to this rotating shaft. And I, I, this is this this sort of mechanism here that I have with the on the pendulum coupler is something that I typically do whenever I have to lock a component to a shaft. So what I do is I sort of so this this component is sort of hollow on the inside, uh, so that the shaft could fit through just just about fit through. And then of course it's got this sort of gap here um, in between uh, this this these two surfaces here. So basically if I screw uh if I just Put a screw through here you'll see how that gap kind of closes and then effectively clamps down onto the shaft um, so that's how that works and then if i hide the pendulum you'll just see that's just basically a, a hole that the pendulum can just basically fit and slot right in down inside there and then what i did was i just put a shaft lock on the end of this i 3d printed the shaft locks uh, in a similar mechanism with a similar mechanism to this and locked it in place i haven't drawn it in there so uh, the next thing that we've got is uh, we that connects to the control block is the intermediate gear, and that's this that's this component here. And how it does it is I think that this I think this rod is five millimeters. Um, so there's got uh, and I've got on that goes also straight through the control block, and. Uh, what happens is there's some slots, some sort of semicircular slots in here uh, on both sides and that allows me to slot in a circular bearing into both of them and if it's deep enough it, it'll basically go right down and wouldn't again it wouldn't protrude past this surface uh, so that's what I did so I've put in a circular bearing inside this slot here and another one in there and then I just basically push the, uh, the rod straight through the both of them and then you can just put your intermediate gear on the end of it and you can put a shaft lock on the end of it uh, just in case uh, to prevent any sort of translational motion that might might happen. So finally, we've got the motor clamp and this is the last sort of 3D printed component that I had and it basically, it, it locks the motor down onto the control block. And how it does this is what you need to do is most of DC motors have these sort of holes, these sort of mounting holes to mount it to something to fix it in place. Because uh, if you don't do that, you could, as you can imagine, as this gear starts to rotate and push against something, it's going to try to rotate the motor as well. So if you don't lock it down to something, uh, you, it, you could end up just with some, some backlash basically and the motor will try to turn inside there. You'll get some motion, some rotation of the motor without actual any actually having any rotation of the uh, movement of the cart itself. So you want to make sure and sort of screw down, use these holes in the in the motor clamp, sort of uh, screw down the motor and lock it in place. Uh, of course, we've also got these uh, screw holes here as well to actually bolt it down onto the control block. Um, the last thing that's actually also a bit that kind of is optional is uh, as you can see in this from here, um, the, the, these teeth, these gears of these gears don't actually mesh 
and what you can do is well what I've done is I've put this sort of um, a sort of extra layer of, of 3d printed material just sort of sandwiched between the motor clamp and the control block and that just allows me to make up some height uh, basically so that the the gears mesh uh, well and it's much better than having to reprint a con the entire control block or reprint the entire um, uh, motor clamp uh, uh, if you to try to get those um, those tolerances correct uh, so that's uh, that's all the components basically that I've, I've 3d printed and that's how the entire com uh, sort of system is assembled so I hope that made some sense and I hope you um, understand get a good understanding of how this this whole thing is assembled right so so that's it for this video I didn't want to make it too long um, we've basically covered the overall design We've covered a little bit of how I have assembled it. And in the next video, we'll talk about the electronics, what electronics are used. Um, we'll talk about um, uh, the software overall architecture. And then by that point, we should be able to drive it, this with a step response and observe the angular position of the pendulum and the cart, cart position, uh, which we can then use to help us model it in MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.